What's good everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna go out and do some macro photography with the Canon RF 100 2.8 macro lens. Also, I wanna share some tips with you guys on how to get some really good macro shots. And the, the June bugs are already atrocious along the lake shore right now. <clears throat> Found a really beautiful red and yellow flower. I wanna show you guys a tip on how to make it look like a fresh rain just came down on your subject, uh, even when it's not raining out. What we're gonna do is have one of these little spray bottles here, and you can buy these at the dollar store or at your grocery store, very, very cheap, and just fill it up just with some regular tap water. And what we're gonna do is just take the bottle and spray just over the top of the flower, and then underneath the flower. If it is a little bit windy outside, don't worry too much about it. Just raise up your shutter speed as much as you can in those situations, as well as have a tripod on hand. Throw up a couple photos right now of the flowers that I was able to get. Hope you guys enjoy them, and we'll go on to the next tip. So my next tip slash hack for macro photography is on days where it's extremely harsh sunlight. Today, I really don't have that problem because it's overcast, but I still wanna show you guys a good way to uh, help you still get those good shots and balance out that light. And that is to get yourself one of these little pocket uh, light deflectors. And you can either just hand hold it over your subject or just get one of these little cheap uh, re retractable uh, stands here. It just goes right into the ground and then this little retractable arm here attaches to the light deflector. And then you can stick it into the ground and kind of maneuver this any way you want to uh, kind of bl uh, block off the harsh light. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested in it, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about real quick. Like that. And then whichever way the sun is the harshest, you can kind of just maneuver it around your subject. Get a couple more shots. So I'm also going to utilize for my next little hack here is these little cubes, these LED light cubes. Uh, this one's by Aperture, but you can get the cheaper ones off of Amazon. I'll also leave a link to this as well if you're interested. And what this little guy is gonna do is it's going to raise up those dark, harsh shadows. Say if you're out in a dark woodland somewhere or you're somewhere around here where a bunch of brushes and uh, it's going to even out the highlights and the whites a lot better. Oh, there's a really cool looking bug here. Let's see if I can get a, a photo of him. I'm not too sure what kind he is. a bee over here too that I want to get. 
Hopefully I don't get stung. <laughs> Here's another pro tip guys, uh, when you're doing any kind of nature, wildlife, or even macro photography, we're gonna be down on the ground on your knees for a very long period of time. Get yourself some knee pads. Now they do have the hard shell ones that you can buy uh, for construction and stuff like that, but I've found that these soft gel kind that are almost like compression socks, almost as a, a really elastic uh, soft material with gel inserts on them, they're typically used for volleyball players, so it's kind of funny, but uh, these things are a godsend, man. I am telling you, I am, these are probably one of my best favorite purchases that I've ever made for photography, especially if you're over the age of 40 and your body is, and your muscles and your bones are not quite what they used to be in your younger days. So as I'm still learning macro photography, I'm finding out that it's forcing me to slow down and to really think about more about my composition. Sometimes that means because it's such a narrow depth of field, because uh, you're getting real, really tight on your subject, I have to watch my backgrounds even more just because of the narrow depth of field. It is so thin. If that's the look you're going for and you're wanting to shoot wide open, say at f2, f2.8, you really have to keep track of your backgrounds uh, because typically if you're wanting to get everything pin sharp, you're wanting to shoot at f9 to f16. Also a good tip is do the overhead shots, uh, not just the low angles. Low angles are great and uh, going around the subjects and getting different angles that way, low to the, low to the ground, but also get high up and point it directly down. This works really good for flowers. Been hearing really good things about this uh, Picardin. Picardin, insect repellent, repels mosquitoes and ticks for up to 14 hours. So we're gonna try this out for the day because man, whew, these bad boys are out in full force today. Walking around in goose poop everywhere just to get some photography and ah, the joys of nature and wildlife photography. I am getting turned into one big mosquito bite out here. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed those few photographs that I was able to get into the bucket. Let me know down in the comments below any other macro photography tips that you guys might have to share. I would love to hear about them as I'm always learning. Until the next video guys, remember there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Get outdoors and enjoy that opportunity with your cameras that's in front of you. Till the next one, take care, God bless, cheers.